Right, here we go. Here we go. I, I like that. I th hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And uh, being an old baseball player, and I'm sporting this uh, CBU gear this morning because my son is a, a assistant baseball coach at Cal Baptist University, and he's the head of recruiting. And they start the playoffs today, and they got the best of the best up in uh, Azusa Pacific. They're, they they play Azusa Pacific today. There's Chico State's in there, UC San Diego, Cal Poly Pomona, and Dixie State from Utah. And I tell you what, these, these kids can pl really play some baseball. Every year, they'll have four or five kids that get drafted into the pros. They actually, the NCAA calls Cal Baptist University, University pitching you, which means pitching university, because every year, these kids just uh, are able to make a living at playing the game of baseball. So I'm sporting this in honor of my son. But for me, it's crazy because I went to Chico State, and so they're there. I got my bachelor's degree in physical education back in the... 80s, they called it recess. I got my degree in re I got my degree in recess. But then after I got uh, after I got fired from the corporate role, right down the street here at Guidon, after 23 years, there was a reduction in force, and I decided I told my wife, "Go now, what do I do? Now, what do I do?" And so I ended up going back to school to APU, and I got my master's degree in multiple subjects. And I became an elementary school teacher at Light and Life Christian School. And I did that forever until attendance ran out of that. And then uh, Pastor Gary Ennis from Lamps Fellowship. I actually started out with that church 20 years ago in the living room with 36 of us. We were a church plant off of Pastor Marty's church, Lamps Fellowship Marietta. And uh, I went started that. And um, about eight years ago, uh, Pastor Gary said, hey, are you ready to come full-time ministry? And I said, no. And uh, but after I prayed, I I came on board. So I've been with Pastor Gary. I've been with Lambs Fellowship under now Pastor Buzzy Ennis for the last eight years, and it's been a, it's been it's been a great ride. And if I can tell a story with Pastor Marty back in the day, coming out, yeah, I know. This does, does everybody know? Does everybody know Pastor Marty? Well, I tell you what, I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right here. I'm gonna do it right here. You know, uh, 22 years ago. And as I'm floundering around, and, and I'm speaking on strength, but doing things in my own strength and not uh, God's supernatural strength, you know, I was destroying everything around me. I, I was climbing the corporate ladder, and, and all I cared about were, were, were titles, making money, wearing uh, Cole Hahn shoes and, and uh, $250 shoes and, and looking cool. And uh, so my, my wife at the time, she was number five on the list. My kids were up there, but you know what? Um, I needed something more. I need some more. And, and to, my, to my wife's credit at the time, she said, hey, we are going to the Catholic Church. Let's go over to Lamb's Fellowship. We've heard some things about Lamb's Fellowship. And so we went to Lamb's Fellowship, and immediately, between the worship, between Pastor Marty's teaching, I'm in tears every doggone Sunday. And I'm not sure why I'm in tears. But we know why, right, men? We know why. And so it's been a love affair, not only with Pastor Marty for 20 plus years, but it's been a love affair with our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he, he changed my heart, he transformed my heart, and now I'm in the business of loving on people and loving on people and hope they see that same love and they want to come along. Amen? Amen? And so that's the way it starts. So it's your fault, Pastor Marty. It's your fault that we're here. That love affair, yeah. Oh, speaking about love affair, we have uh, our church... <laughs> and so I'm going to be bouncing all over here. I hope you guys have a long time this morning. Let's speak about love affair. Our church likes to be called uh, serving the city, being the church. So we like to get outside of our four walls a couple times a year and, and uh, you know, go work on people's properties. And, uh, you know, I come up to this property and, and this guy's out in his front yard and the, the grass is high, the weeds are high. Me and Dan Lincoln are in the car and I roll down the window and said, hey, my brother. He goes, yeah. I go, hey, man, we like to love on your lawn. <laughs> and I'm with Dan Lincoln, and Dan's going, looking at me like, what are you doing? No, 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 we don't want to make love on your lawn. We want to love on your lawn. We want to mow it. We want to take care of the weeds. We want to do that. So we did that for a long time, and that didn't last. All right, well, let me, let me get to my notes here. Let me get to that. Oh, I tell you what, it's an, it's an honor to be here, and, and I treasure the chance to, to talk to you guys. And, and for me, because being a, a worship leader, being pastoral care, being an administrator, being the landscaper, being the window cleaner, I, I don't get a chance to, to talk much. 
you know, to you guys. So this opportunity pushes me out of my comfort zone. And it's almost like preparing for a, a final exam this morning for me. You guys, you guys know that? And the nightmares of preparing for a final exam? All right, so maybe you've heard the story of the student taking a class in ornithology. Do you guys know what ornithology is? Birds, but who said birds? Dude, did you know that? Birds? OK, it's the study of birds. And Wait, didn't Josh come with you? He did come with me, but I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him that. I didn't tell him that. Dude, you really knew that? Ornithology? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So you can only imagine it's a very difficult class. And the professor, the professor was known as Killer Miller. Killer Miller. And she was very, she was very difficult. And she was a professor known for her toughness and for her difficult exams. Well, the final exam comes and the students study for long hours. And you know what you do when you study for long hours? What do you do? You drink a lot of espresso. You drink five-hour any drinks. You drink monster drinks. Uh, but if you're from our era, you know, the late 70s, even the mid 80s, what did we drink back then to keep us up at night? You remember that? Who said Jolt? Jolt Cola. Do you guys remember Jolt Cola? So you drink Jolt Cola. Back, I thought that. that that's and twice the caffeine so well the student the student enters the classroom on this final exam and to his surprise there aren't any papers there for the exam no multiple choice questions no essay questions no scantron sheet nothing except for 25 pictures hung on the wall of birds feet So Professor Miller says the final exam is for you to identify the birds based on their feet. Well, the student just goes nuts. He shouts, no wonder you're called Killer Miller. The student's going ballistic. Well, I'm not going to take this exam. The professor says, OK. Well, I guess you'll fail. Well, fine. Fail me. OK. The professor says, what's your name? So the student proceeds to take off his socks. <laughs> and his shoes and he says well look at my feet and you tell me <laughs> he still he he still failed <laughs> he still failed well we all know the final exam is coming but we don't know the day or the time amen, amen. and my question is while we're here on earth while we're doing what we do while we're mentors while we're disciples while we're disciplers disciplees where do you get your strength to do it all we do it all in our own natural strength of course but do you do you graft into the one who has the supernatural strength you know back in the day i mean playing baseball uh a lot of you guys you're very athletic you know we can do things in our own strength but i don't know about you but as i close in on on 60 years old i've lost a lot of my natural strength you know, I can't even open up the pickle jar anymore. I got to give it to my wife <laughs> to open up the pickle jar. So I know what it's like to start losing that strength. So we start losing the physical strength. What do we need to hang on to? What do we need to tap into? His supernatural strength, right? So the song we just worshiped sings, strength will rise as we what? As we wait upon the Lord. And it says in Isaiah 40, 31, it's very familiar. But those who hope in the Lord will what? Renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. And they will walk and not be faint. Isaiah was talking to Israel and telling them the Lord is their everlasting God. The creator of the ends of the earth. And we know the creator of the universe. And says hope and trusting in the Lord will give way to to what? To God's strength. The word strength is mentioned 360 times in the Bible, applying both natural and supernatural strength. Natural strength, which I don't have anymore, was really summed up for me in this particular movie. Anybody see uh, Les Miserables? Anybody? None of you guys? None of your wives made you go see Les Miserables? <laughs> Only one? Rick? None of you guys? Oh, the old one. Everybody see the play? The musical? The musical. Through the whole music. What'd you think about the mu what'd you think about the music? I tell you what, the music spoke to me. Being being uh, you know I it was like a worship set for me. I mean I truly got you talk about strength. I truly was inspired 
by by the the music of that of that movie. And so I ended up uh, going to the movie, and uh, I was in Indianapolis at the time, and I didn't know what I was getting to. I was going to the movie with a bunch of people. It wouldn't have been my first choice, but I'm a, but but I'm a Hugh Jackman fan. Do you guys know Hugh Jackman played the part of Jean Valjean? And Anne Hathaway, who, who, who better than Anne Hathaway? Is this on tape? Sorry, baby. I, you know I love you. You know I love you. And Anne means nothing to me. Well, I, I go to Les, Les Miserables because it says natural strength, which I don't have anymore, was really summed up for me in the movie, the play Les Miserables. And uh, Les Miserables was a 1,500-page novel uh, by Victor Hugo. You, you guys know that name, Victor Hugo? And of course, it was made into a Broadway uh, staple and a great movie. And I'm really surprised your wives haven't made you go see that. But the, but the novel is based on the time of the uh, far-reaching social and political upheaval in France that lasted from 1789 to 1799. Kind of sounds like today, it, it, doesn't it? You know, with uh, far-reaching social and political upheaval. And it, and it follows the lives of several characters, particularly the struggles of an ex-convict. Jean Valjean and his experience of redemption, which is a really powerful story. You, you guys should watch the movie. It, it's really good. But the main character, Jean Valjean, is played by Hugh Jackman, and, and I'm a fan. I'm a fan. You guys a fan of, of him? What, uh, he, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he doesn't need to do something with some, something like that. Well, here we go. Jean Valjean is going to be released from prison after 19 years. Five for stealing bread for his starving sister and her family, and 14 more for numerous escape attempts is finally being released. Now this just blows my mind about strength. But the scene in the movie before Jean Valjean is released is they're pulling in this huge ship. You're talking back in the 1700s. And ships weigh about 1,200, 1,300 pounds. And you got all the prisoners bringing this ship into dry dock. So if you can only imagine, they're all with ropes. And this ship is gigantic. You guys ever see the Star of India down in San Diego? Similar to that. So, my question is, where do you get that kind of strength? Is it natural or is it supernatural? So these prisoners were holding a rope tied to the ship as they pulled into the dry dock. Now, pulling that ship looked like the meanest, toughest, death-defying game of tug-of-war you'd ever seen. With your opponent, the ship, and the sea. Now, that ship, like I told you, weighed between 12 hundred and thirteen hundred tons now rhythmically with the crashing waves the prisoners had to tug the boat as the waves came in so you got their their rhythm they're in rhythm with themselves but they're pulling pulling this boat and it just looks outrageous but then you're talking France where the water temperature runs about 53 degrees now for us that temperature today surfers would have to wear a quality wetsuit neoprene hood gloves and boots those prisoners pulling in that ship were out there in tattered clothes at best do you think they had water moccasins on their feet no you're probably right after the men so they finally got this ship in but the prison guard his name was Jovert knew Valjean was going to be released but had one more dig at his soul one more impossible task for Jean Valjean to do and that task was displayed by natural strength, but I believe summoned by God's supernatural strength to help him. Prison guard Jovert told Valjean to pick up and move out of the way a 35-foot mast or beam. So you can imagine with a ship weighing about 1,200 to 1,300 tons, how much that mast weighed. The world record for a squat lift is 1,268 pounds. I imagine that this beam weighed more than that. Painfully, Valjean leveraged his body to get in position to lift that mast. As he lifted this heavy mast, even the muscles in his face were doing their best to help him lift. Watching Valjean attempt the lifting of that mast had me thinking, wow, that dude's pretty strong. And where does someone summon that type of strength, especially after the brutal task of bringing that ship in the dry dock? Where does he get it? So mustering strength, only divine intervention could pull off. He lifted and he pulled that mast over to Jovert and he dropped it at his feet. I can't help but wonder, where did he get this physical strength from? Because you figure you're in prison for 19 years back in the 1700s. And I write, 
He didn't probably have a workout area like they do have now where you can pump weights and get that kind of strength. Uh, what type of nutrition would you need as an Olympic athlete to get that thing up? I write, you'd have to have great energy to lift that, that mass. I'm sure he didn't have power zone type smoothies that morning with the best of ingredients that would have all the actin and myosin and all the neurons and synapses in his body firing off at top level activity. You're talking you got all the red, all the white fibers that are just going like this, fires exploding because you have to be Olympic weightlifter to lift that. But I believe the Lord blessed Valjean with incredible strength. And we come to find out that it just wasn't physical, natural strength that changed his life. But God's supernatural strength in allowing him to live a life set apart from his criminal past. Amen. As Christians, we are to be strong in the mighty power of God. This means that our strength is not our own. It is not human or fleshly. Our strength is not of this world, but our strength is found in who? Jesus Christ. In our having a vibrant, dynamic relationship with him, as Paul tells us in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who Strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. In other words, there is no other source that gives man the strength to overcome the world with its trials, its temptations, and its death. It is through submission to God's strength that we overcome the power of our adversary, the dark one, the evil one, Satan. So James 4.7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will what? He will flee from you. It is by first aligning ourselves with the strength of God through our total submission to him that we are able to withstand the wiles of our adversary, the evil one, the dark one, the prince of lies. And then I write, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Well, I told you a little bit, 22 years ago, my body in its own strength finally gave up and I gave in to the Lord's supernatural strength. The Lord uses many ways to pull one up to his open arms. He uses many ways to get your attention and many ways to redeem you. And to a certain extent, God used a resurrected chicken to get my attention. Have you guys heard that chicken story? Marty, have you heard the chicken story? Have you guys heard the chicken story? Well, at the time I'm... Uh, in the corporate world, doing my own thing, very narcissistic, very selfish, uh, and just everything around me falling apart. My marriage, my, my kids, uh, my work, everything. And so um, the, the first day that I come to Pastor Marty's church, the Friday before that Sunday, I, I live in Wildemar. My, my kids had a petting zoo. We had a chicken that ended up passing away, and it was in the pool. And um, it uh, rigor mortis set in. It was stiff, and it was an ugly chicken anyway. It had it had a it had a jacked up eye. It had jacked up feathers. It was just an ugly bird. And I thought, fine, you're dead. My kids are saying, Dad, will you bur will you bury that bird? I said, No, I'm not going to bury that bird. I went right to the green trash can bin recycle, and I put that bird in there. That's how nasty it was. That's how little I cared. So that that was Friday. Sunday morning, my wife at the time says, Hey, we're going to Lamb's Fellowship. And so we go to church there, and of course I'm in tears. I'm in tears. But knowing that afternoon, guys, I was going to leave my family. I was out. I was going to pack my bags, and I was out because who knows where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. But I was so OCD about my yard that I thought, I'm just going to mow my yard one more time before I go because I'm going to leave a nice yard for my wife as I pack my bags and I go. So guess what? So I fire up the lawnmower and I mow a couple rows and I go over to the green trash can bin where that dead, ugly chicken was. And I get ready to put the grass clippings in. Guess what looks up at me? The chicken. It's alive as can be. The jacked up eye is not jacked up anymore. The feathers that were all messed up, they're perfect. So now I'm thinking scientifically, well, how, how does this bird come back to life? And so I'm, I'm calling my wife at the time. I put the recycling bin down. I'm calling my wife. Hey, come over here. And she's, just, and she's thinking, looking at me like, no, you're an idiot. You're not going to show me this maggot-infested bird. I'm not coming. I said, you need to come over here. So this bird walks out, and she looks at me, and she holds on to me, and she goes, that's a sign of hope. 
That's a sign of hope for us. That's a sign of hope for our family. And right then and there, you know, I mean, you talk about that boom, but it wasn't so much a boom. I just felt this peace come over me, this peace come over me. So my wife says, hey, by the way, um, a bunch of people are going to Harvest Crusade that night. And it's in San Diego at the time. This is 1996, 1996, summer of 1996. So I go down to San Diego State, and I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm feeling something different around me, but I'm just not, you know, I'm just not there yet. So we go down to San Diego Stadium. Greg Laurie's doing his thing. He's teaching. I'm sitting, uh, you know, with my kids in my arms, and, but just listening to what he has to say. And then all of a sudden, he does his altar call, right? And guess who's singing? Who do you think singing back in that day? Who said Crystal Lewis? Crystal Lewis is singing, Come Just As You Are. And I'm sitting there, and I'm already, you know, I cried my eyes out at the service this morning, and now I'm starting to cry again, but I'm not, I'm not getting out of my seat. My wife and the rest of the family go down to the field. You're talking San Diego Stadium. I'm a baseball player. I'm just, any time to get down on a baseball field, you're going. But I thought, no, I'll just sit, I'll just sit here with my, my, my son at the time was one year old, my youngest. He's 23 now. And I'm sitting in the chair. She's singing, come just as you are. And I'm saying, I'm cool. I'm cool sitting here. But guess what happens? Guess what gets hot underneath my rear end? The, the seat. The seat gets really, really hot, and I'm just kind of fidgeting. Then all of a sudden, I just hear this voice, come. Come to me. Get down here. You're mine. So I take my son, and my family's already down on the field, and I'm going running down, and now I'm on the field. But now I'm a, I'm a baseball player, so I'm on the field, San Diego Stadium field. And so I'm out there in left field going, whoa, this is what this feels like. But then again, Crystal Lewis is still singing. Greg Laurie is still inviting people down. And right then, I gave my heart to the Lord. Right there. And it's been an amazing ride for the last 20 plus years coming along. So, talk about getting strength back in your life. Talk about a redeeming God, a transforming God, a healing God came into my life, came into my family's life. And, of course, putting down roots at Lamb's Fellowship, Marietta. And then, of course, going to a church plant, Lamb's Fellowship, Lake Elsinore, which we just celebrated our 20th anniversary, by the way, this past January. So King David, a great musician and psalmist, penned Psalm 28.7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The song Crystal Lewis sang that night still reverberates in my heart and gives me the strength to continue on singing and believing and trusting those words that she sung that night to come just as you are. And it's so amazing that we can come daily just as we are, right where we're at, and our good, good Father is always there with open arms. He yearns for us. He wants to be with us. He wants to hang with us. In Isaiah 12, 2, it says, Surely God is my salvation, and I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And 1 Peter 5, 10, And the God of all grace who called you to His eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, and I know that we've all been through our suffering, and I went through years and years and years of suffering. Will, himse will himself restore you, and what? And make you strong, and make you firm, and make you steadfast. That goes for King David. That goes for me. That goes for you. That goes for Jean Valjean. And all of us. Jehovah El Salai, the God of my strength. May we leap for joy and give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Can I get an amen? amen. And I want to, may I sing one more song? Can I, I yeah? Marty, do you mind? Uh, and would you tune it up and, um, and, and, br and bring me a, a monster drink? Oh, I need to, what's that strap too? I got that strap. Oh, you took it. I'll take that. I'll take that strap, and you know what? Let me have that uh, that black capo right down there. You really took this thing apart, didn't you? 
I'm not I'm not sure if this thing is tuned now. Well, even though I, I yeah, is that still going? Sorry. Even though I talked a lot about, you know, worship's been a really big part, and, and Pastor Marty penned a lot of songs that I cut my teeth on, you know, back in the day. But I know there was a church, when I first started doing worship back in the 90s, there was a church that, in England, that was really struggling with uh, worship songs and, and performance, performance worship songs. And so it got to the point where they stopped doing, they stopped doing worship. Because it got, it became, it became too much of the show. It became too much of the show. So they stopped singing songs. They started just uh, worshiping with with psalms and proverbs. And so Matt Redman, that was his church, and so he penned this song. So if you guys, would you guys stand up with me? And I know you know this song. And if you know it, go ahead and sing it. When the music fades. All is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's the word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more, I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required you search you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart come on man i'm coming i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Come on, sing, King of Endless Word. King of Endless Word. No one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. Come on, fellas, I'll bring, I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. Come on, fellas, I'm coming. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you. I'm coming back, I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. Keep standing, man. Yes, Lord, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this morning, and it is all about you. Because, Father God, you are our all in all. You're the love of our soul. You're the creator of our hearts, and you truly yearn for us to come, come spend time with you. And I pray that for these brothers here, that they will take time to devote with you, to sit with you, to abide in your faithful presence. Lord Jesus, there's nothing better than your presence. So may we take this worship, may we take this word, may we, may we graft into your supernatural strength. We can't do it without you, otherwise we have an adversary, we have an evil one that wants to destroy us, that doesn't give a rip about us, that wants to just tear us apart. But we have you, Lord Jesus, that covers it all. We have you, Lord Jesus, that conquered death through the victory of the power of your resurrection. So, fellas, may you tap into the power of that resurrection for we have victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And we love you, Lord. We pray this. We sing this. We exalt you with all of this in your wonderful, loving, healing, merciful, trustworthy, faithful name. We love you, Lord, and thank you for loving us. And we pray this in your name. And God, all God's men said, Amen. Love you guys. Thank you.